Who's the Boss is an innocent, pre-internet ode to the classic family sitcoms of earlier TV generations. It follows Tony Maselli, a former professional baseball player, who relocates to Fairfield, Connecticut for his new career as a live-in housekeeper. The show truly expands on what it means to start a brand new life. And after being nominated for more than 40 awards, including 10 Primetime Emmys, as well as consistently rating in the top 10 of final Primetime ratings of its time, it's no secret why Who's the Boss is still beloved to this day. A feel-good comedy that also explores dramatic scenes and topics. Tony's ode to his father is touching and powerful. This is a peak 80s series for sure, even against steep competition, premiering the same night as The Cosby Show and ending the same as Growing Pains and MacGyver. Sitcom Symmetry. I'm Nostalgic Nick and today we're heading back to Connecticut to check out the cast of Who's the Boss and see what they're up to today. We'll find out which series regular still enjoys watching reruns of Who's the Boss, as well as what 90s sitcom basically duplicated this formula for even more success. If you enjoyed the deep dive, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you never miss a beat. Now let's go check out Tony's brand new life around the bend. Tony Danza Tony Maselli is a New York jock through and through, who decides to relocate to Connecticut, leaving the bustling Big Apple where his young daughter can receive an occasional black eye. Hey, that's because there were three of those guys, Dad to take up a cushy job with picket fences, working as a live-in housekeeper, aka Mr. Goodmop. And it was fun watching this hunk of an ex-ball player handle the merging of two families for an impressive eight seasons. Danza began acting in 1978, rising to stardom with over 100 episodes of the acclaimed James Brooks created Taxi, a phenomenal series so Danza quickly got accustomed to the frantic life of TV acting. However, before mentioning any success in acting, we cannot forget his roots, boxing. The Brooklyn brawler grew up in Long Island and received a wrestling scholarship to the University of Dubuque in Iowa. He began boxing in 1975, first kind of as a joke egged on by his friends. But Dangerous Tony fighting as a middleweight became a crowd favorite for his walk-in slugging style, compiling a 9-3 record with 9 KOs, 7 in the first round which is, yeah, very dangerous. It was during a gym workout one day he was spotted for his role on Taxi, but Tony didn't want to give up title dreams right away and was a dual threat, boxing and acting for two years before concentrating on his lines a bit more and giving up boxing. Fresh off of driving cabs, he entered Who's the Boss just a year later, and Danza's Tony Maselli was ranked as the number 23 all-time greatest TV dad in TV Guide's 2004 listing. In 1994, we got the angelic baseball flick with a young Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Angels in the Outfield, also starring Christopher Lloyd and Danny Glover. I mean, what a great cast. In 97, we had a brief Tony Danza show. And then Family Law in 2002, which enjoyed a bit more success. In 2013, Danza reunited with Joseph Gordon-Levitt in his written, starred, and directed film, Don John. Today, Tony Danza is 71 years old and still going strong. We last saw him in a 2022 episode of Blue Bloods. But if you're hungry for more Danza, check out his cookbook that he and his son Mark co-authored. It's called Don't Fill Up on the Antipasto, Tony Danza's Father-Son Cookbook. Catherine Helmond Mona Robinson is Angela's man-crazy mother who eventually moves into an apartment over the garage and delivered some of the best one-liners I've ever heard in a sitcom. That Welling kid's tough. He's such a nice-looking boy. Not anymore. <laughs> Hellman began acting in Hollywood in 1962 with one episode of Car 54, Where Are You? It was season two for all you fans of that classic series. But her career didn't really begin rolling until 1971, beginning with a small role in the star-studded comedy The Hospital. And she graced some hit shows throughout the 70s, two episodes of Mannix in 1974, followed by a season two two-parter of The Bionic Woman playing Dr. Harkins in 1977. But the following year, she was cast for her first regular series role, the ditzy matriarch Jessica Tate on the popular soap opera-ish Soap. She followed that successful Connecticut-based series with another, the main reason we're all here today, Who's the Boss? 
and Hellman stands out as the quick-witted vixen mother. She enjoyed so much TV success, continuing with Coach in the 90s, and Everybody Loves Raymond in the 2000s. But she found time for a movie here and there, highlighted by 1976's Hitchcock-directed Family Plot, 1985's Terry Gilliam-directed Brazil, and 1987's Gary Marshall-led Overboard. Terrific films with terrific directors. Catherine was married twice, yet had no kids. She turned to Buddhism in later years while living between her home in LA, New York, and London. But very sadly, this charming actress passed away in 2019 from complications of Alzheimer's. Helmand was 89 years old. Judith Light. Angela Bauer is a divorced advertising executive, playing the role perfectly as more conservative and uptight, especially compared to Tony's warm and loving father vibe. Judith stepped into the limelight in 1977, with the breakout role in the soap opera One Life to Live, earning two consecutive daytime Emmys for lead actress. When her soap arc ended in 1983, she began a love affair with television movies, highlighted by the 1989 biographical drama The Ryan White story. The 2000s brought even more TV success, playing Judge Donnelly on Law & Order SVU, and was a huge part in the popular comedy Ugly Betty. Right now you can check her out on HBO in the show Julia about Julia Child. Judith is 73 years old today and rolling in success. Aside from acting, she is heavily involved in advocating for the LGBTQ plus community and those with HIV and AIDS. Judith remains very close with Tony Danza and has been married to Robert Desiderio since 1989. Those two met on the set of One Life to Live. Alyssa Milano Samantha is Tony Maselli's daughter, playing the part of a gutsy New York kid. She began acting in 1984, breaking into the biz with a killer of a film, playing Jenny Matrix in Commando. And then Who's the Boss was life-changing, a role she competitively beat out 1,500 girls who auditioned for the role of Samantha. And the price of winning the gig? The Milano family had to uproot their lives and move 3,000 miles to Hollywood. Through the years, Milano has had a number of memorable roles, from Jennifer Mancini in Melrose Place to Phoebe Hallowell in Charmed. She wasn't just acting on a top 10 series at the time, she was also breaking into music. Releasing her first album called Look In My Heart in 1989 at just 16 years old. Oh, look in my heart, But Alyssa had to deal with some controversy too. In 1998, she was awarded $230,000 in a default judgment against a web designer who allegedly posted nude photos of her. And over the years, Alyssa has just done it all, from commercials to appearing in music videos, and even launching her own line of team apparel for female baseball fans. On top of all that, she's still acting at 49 years old. We last saw her in 2022's Brazen, as well as the Netflix show Insatiable. She enjoys playing piano and flute and is just a princess. I say that because Disney used her image to partially create Ariel for 1989's The Little Mermaid. Danny Pintaro Jonathan Bauer is the adorable son of Angela, a happy-go-lucky little boy who was a tad annoying for his new older sister. Pintaro got his start in 1983, appearing in the horror film Cujo, which if you've not seen Cujo, you gotta see it, it's awesome. He also appeared in a couple episodes of As the World Turns, before heading into his breakout role of Jonathan Bauer. But once the show ended, he was less frequently cast and made a transition to the stage. We did see him back on TV. TV for a special TV Child Stars episode of The Weakest Link in 2001, but he kind of left Hollywood and worked as a Tupperware sales representative, as well as a restaurant manager in Las Vegas. Pintaro has been married to Will Taberas since 2014, and the following year the former Child Star made a big announcement on Oprah that he was HIV positive. Despite his health condition, he's still dabbling in acting, with a future TV movie titled A Country Christmas Harmony. Today, Daniel is 46 years old, and when he's looking to revisit those glory days, he'll pop on an episode of Who's the Boss? Pintaro says it's like looking through an old yearbook. And what a storied, hysterical, wonderful, eight-season-long yearbook he has. 
Who's the Boss was such a successful show that a sitcom in the 90s basically copied it exactly. And we have a cast deep dive for that one too. Fran Drescher's The Nanny. But who knows, maybe Who's the Boss isn't done either. In August of 2020, plans to revive the series were announced, but nothing has come of the excitement yet. So, who was your favorite character on Who's the Boss? What was an episode that you remember being really solid? Get in the comments and let's toast to a boss of a show. And please don't forget to smash that thumbs up icon to show us support. And ensure you're subscribed so you never miss a memory. From all of us here at Do You Remember, we want to thank you for watching.